shining up far through shadows dim, giving a light for those who long have gone, and guiding the wise men on their way unto the place where Jesus lay. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star. a bucket list for me right there um goodness give me chills make me cry uh, if y'all don't know that's my mom playing and that's my sister singing they're gonna be back up here in a minute towards the end but they uh the one thing I, the, y'all understand i love this church I love coming to Mountaintop, but I miss one thing, and my mama plays for the early service. She's fine. She can come up here with Uncle Colbert. He's going to need some help. My mama plays the piano for the early service at their church, and my sister sings, and I miss that, and I called them, and uh, I told them I was preaching. And they said, uh, well, we might, we might make it. And I said, look, I said, there's no need to, to, every time I preach, there's no need to come to church and hear me preach. I said, it's online. You can listen to it later. It's a long drive. And, and uh, nor what time's now? 11. 11. All right, I got to get done by 11. But their church was having service at 11. And so it wasn't going to work out for them to be at church for nap time, and, and so they said, well, we're up early anyways, we'll just come to church with y'all, and I said, well, if y'all are going to come, I need you to do me a favor, I need you to sing. I said, because I, you know, we don't get to go to church often together, and I said, if, if I'm going to preach and y'all are going to be here, I want you to sing. And uh, so, they were singing, practicing last night, and uh, I, was, I was crying, I couldn't, couldn't hold it back, because, I mean, well, it's Christmas, and what's in your bulletin, and, and Miss Laura and Miss Martha Gale, y'all work really hard on that thing, and I really apologize. I'm going to get to that in a minute, but that is not what we're talking about today. Take your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 2. We'll get there in a minute. When I heard that song, them singing last night, that's when the sermon came together. I told Brother Bob a couple of weeks ago, well, let me just back up. Brother Bob called me. I was driving. Where are you going? Walk around. around? Let her come up here. She can run around with me. If I can't preach over a baby, we got a problem. Brother Bob called me. I was running down the road. and He said, I want you to preach Christmas Eve service. I said, you bet you. Not a second guess, not nothing. You got it. I said, it's easy. It's Christmas story. 
Let me tell you, it's the hardest thing I've come up with. I write lessons every Wednesday night for youth. I've helped write VBS. I've preached once, write devotions down there at the arena. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. I couldn't figure it out. Come to Brother Bob a couple weeks ago, and I said, I've got four sermons for Sunday. He goes, well, this, this is his advice. He said, there's no such thing as too short of a Christmas sermon. I said, understood. I said, all right, we got to narrow this thing down. So I narrowed it down. I thought, life happened. Who in here is tired of the, the hustle and the bustle and the, the craziness and the traffic and the running around and you got 15 houses to go to and you got to go buy all the presents. It's got to be the right present. Look, I know some of you ain't raising your hands because some of you is husbands and you scared you might get elbowed, but we're all in that boat, all right? I was in Conway the other day and I, well, it was Friday. We was headed down to the family's Christmas and I was trying to turn left on the interstate. And I sat through two lights because they kept blocking the intersection. I said, I don't know where they think they're going. That light's not turning any greener, any faster. But I can't turn left, so here I am for 15 minutes. And it only happens at Christmas. Some like other things. So, Christmas perspective. I knew when I sent that to Miss Laura, that was, that was it. Your bulletins has the perspective of Joseph, Mary, and the manger. That's your homework. Okay? Not at all what we're going to do today. But tomorrow when you're around the Christmas tree and there's wrapping paper all on the ground, the kids are running wild, I encourage you to break out your Bible and look at Christmas from Joseph, Mary, and the manger's perspective. But today I want to bring in a little bit of my life and open my life up a little bit. I have had one of the hardest weeks that I can remember. This has probably been one of the hardest Christmases I've ever had. I don't know if y'all like my jacket or not, but I kind of do. Hey, anybody's wondering, you can get it on Amazon. But, Trent came to me. I've already got it rented out. <laughs> Trent, you need it past tomorrow? All right, after tomorrow, we'll, you can come rent it. Just get with me, all right? I got the Christmas jacket on. I got the Christmas hat on. I'm looking the part. But, man, this has been one hard Christmas. Our house is in total disarray. We got told our chimney needed to be tore out. $7,000 estimate. Nah, I can do that. How many men do that? We're, we got another one of those here in a minute, but man, I can do that. I ain't going to pay nobody to do that. I started May 28th. The last piece of brick was broken the last week of July. I probably had 120 hours in that chimney. I hired Braden White to come over and help me. The first morning we got the roof or the, the chimney off, four hours maybe, we was lunchtime. We was down at the roof line. The last week of July we was at the floor. You see how long that took. That wasn't no easy feat. Houses in disarray, bricks were laying all over the place. And it's a, it's a tradition in my family. We go get a, a live Christmas tree. I've had a live Christmas tree my entire life. We go cut it the day after Thanksgiving. Then we have Thanksgiving that afternoon. I told them, I said, I don't even know if we're going to show up. I said, I just, we ain't got a place to put a tree. I I'm just, I'm just don't even care to cut one. Marina made me cut one. And it sat in the corner, undecorated, for a month. Well, just short of a month. Marina decorated it, got it lit up, brought a little Christmas to the house. We can't decorate because there's no point. That wall's fixing to come out. 
So we're, we got a little Christmas going on. And we're rocking along as buying presents. Money's tight. I have no money to spend. Marina gets in the truck. We're headed to work at the body shop. She goes, these tires are bald. I said, they're not bald. I said, they're, they're a little worn, but they're not bald. All right, I can at least get to the new year. How, how many of you men are like that? We can at least get a, a couple more thousand miles off these tires. I get out of the truck. She said, you're going to have to come look at this tire. I walk around there, and I'm like, whatever. I've never seen this before. Every other lug on that tire was completely bald all the way to the center of the tire. I went, well, she was right. Now, I didn't say that. I did not say that. Don't get me wrong. I did not say that. $1,600 in tires. They put the new tires on, get me a four-wheel alignment. I, they call me trucks ready. Oh, by the way, we couldn't do the alignment. Okay. You need new ball joints. Another one of them times, I can handle that. I'm going to save us a little bit of money. I broke two tools, every half-inch ratchet I've got. I broke every breakover bar. It took me four days to push them ball joints out. I finished 2.30 a.m. Monday morning. Truck got dropped off at 7.30 a.m. for an alignment. Because Tuesday, the body shop had needed me to run to Mississippi to go get a $5,000 roof. By the way, if you own a 2012 Ford truck with a sunroof and lights on the, the cab lights, don't dent your hood, okay? You're going to have to go to Hawaii to get the next one, all right? On my way to Mississippi, this truck is oh, it's the worst driving truck I've ever had. And let me tell you, I've had some pretty rough trucks in my life. And I'm like, what is going on? Call the mechanic. Hey, this truck's driving terrible. And I had looked, and I had 85 pounds of pressure in the rear tires and 65 in the front, because that's what Dodge calls for in their three-quarter ton trucks. But the tires they put on was rated for 50 pounds. I made it to the dealership, told the guy I was here to pick up the roof. And I said, man, I've got a really odd request. He said, what's that? I said, can you let some air out of my tires? He looked at me kind of funny because most of the time you ask people to put air in your tires. I was asking somebody to deflate my tires. So he hooked me up, got the air out, drove back. It was perfect. Truck drove perfect. On my way back, I don't know if y'all have ever been from Cleveland, Mississippi, back towards Little Rock. Some of you drivers may have been on that route. There is no fuel stop between Cleveland, Mississippi, and West Helena. And for some reason, I thought there was fuel stop between West Helena and Bisco. Guess what? There's not. And them trucks don't run on air. I hit the interstate. My range said 10 miles. I was 7.5 to the Love truck stop. I called Marina, and she went, why did you wait that long? I said, I didn't. I said, if I could have found a farmer with a, a fuel, I would have gotten some. I said, I was desperate. I pulled in there, got fuel, got back on the road, come home, got the $5,000 part unloaded. All right, I'm hungry. Marina says, let's go to Outback. I said, well, hey, I got a gift card. Any of y'all ever go somewhere because you got a gift card? Yeah. We eat. Some of the worst service I've ever had. I thought, man, here I am. I've had a pretty good day. Got them ball joints done. I was hoping to have a good day. Ended it. Bad service at a restaurant. Man. Electricians at our house working. We're moving some air conditioner. And go to walk in there, and I walk. I see something, and I'm like, there's water in my floor in the garage. I went, something smells a little funny, too. I said, no, please, no. Open freezer number one. Well, it's broke. So I yank everything out of that freezer. Mind you, this freezer is 26 years old. So, hey, I got 26 years. Well, I didn't. I got it handed me down to me. But 26 years, I thought, hey, you could deal. I go, well, we'll throw everything into the chest freezer for tonight, and I'll go get me a new freezer in the morning. Open that chest freezer, and I... Oh, no. Oh, no. This one's not working either. 
I said, well, thank goodness the electrician's here. I said, hey, man, I need you to help me with this plug here. I said, both of them's going out. I said, that's best I can guess, plug's bad. He said, I'll check it, no problem. Plugged his tester in there. He said, man, you got 124 volts on the top, 124 on the bottom. I said, well, let's plug them in something else. Nope, they didn't work. Mind you, because of the slow service we had at our dinner, it is 8.05. Home Depot and Lowe's close at 9. Marina and I unload the back of the, or the horse trailer as quick as we can, take off to town. Thank goodness, Brother Jimmy and Miss Reader was in town. I said, pick one, you go to one. If they got one, let us know. If not, we headed to the other. They called us, said Home Depot's got one. Perfect. Running up in Home Depot. They have this big, tall stand-up. I said, that'll fit. Well, we can't sell you that one. Looks like it's ready to be sold to me. Can't sell you that one. Well, you got that one in scratch and dent. How much you going to knock off? 50 bucks. Time out. Y'all use this? It's used. And it's all dented up. And you going to knock off 50 bucks? Yeah. I said, call the manager. They get the manager on the phone. 50 bucks all we can do. I said, where's he at? Now, mind you, I, I, I wasn't going to hurt him. I was not going to hurt him. But I might have cried in front of him if I could have got a deal. All right? No, he wasn't on the premise. I look at Marina and I said, well, if they ain't going to sell floor models, that's all we got. I looked at him, I said, load it up. Mind you, on the way there, I said, I don't know how in the world we're going to pay for this. We don't get paid till Thursday, and we've spent all our money. I had gutters put on the house that week. Had money from insurance. I could, no, gutters got put on. There was that money gone. It's all right, Johnny. I, I made it. I had to, you know, sell some things, but I made it, Johnny. It's okay. We get out. I go pull the truck around. We load the thing up. I'm going to get back to that. Don't worry. We get to the house, get everything swapped over. It's like midnight. Because, mind you, everything's wet. We got to clean it off, put it back in the freezer. Oh, man, I'm tired. Get ready to lay down. I lay down, I was like, whew. My tummy don't feel real happy. Oh, well. Wake up 3 o'clock in the morning, my tummy was not happy. Keaton, you feel me? I'll get to that in a minute. Y'all will understand that. Food poisoning. When I tell you I've had a hard week, it's been one thing after another. And I was supposed, or I'm supposed to preach today. How in the world am I going to come up with sermon? I'm so mad. I'm, I'm not in a place to, to preach. My. Uh, let me just, we're still on Thursday here, okay? Friday rolls around, helping out at the body shop. Man, it's, we need to leave by three. It's about noon. There ain't nothing here to do. Y'all get out of here. Really? Yeah, y'all go ahead. Run home, get all our stuff packed up. We're on the road, we're ready to go. Besides the 15 minutes I had to wait on the one person that couldn't understand traffic, we get to my grandma's house. We walk in. I think we was the last one there, weren't we? That's about right. I walk in the door. My family's there. That little girl, that's, well, she's in back running around now, but that's my niece. I got four other nieces. Well, three at that one. Three at that Christmas. And a nephew. Spanning from eight to Charlotte's four, right? On the older kids and then Nora's 20 months. And if you walk into a house with that many kids running around, there's not a quiet. It, it is loud. There's toys. 
and I started feeling Sunday sermon. I met the deadline on Thursday night to send in my sermon notes. Something told me that wasn't a sermon, but I didn't know what it was. Well, I saw family, and uh, my sister-in-law, she asked me, she said, we was just talking, she said, how do you come up with your sermon and your lessons? And I said, look, I said, I don't. I said, it's one of these deals that when the Holy Spirit tells me what it is, I, you know. Pastors will agree to that. You, you might write 150 sermons, but if that's not the one the Holy Spirit wants you to write, you just don't feel right about it. And I told her, I said, the one thing I know is when my foot hits that first step, I'm going to know the sermon. I got trust in God that I'm not walking up here blind. But I didn't know what it was. Yet, I didn't realize that it had been laid out for me, but my eyes weren't ready to see it. $1,600 worth of tires. We work at a family business. We have an ability to charge stuff. I didn't have to pay $1,600 at Christmas. The family business said, just pay us back out of your check. Those ball joints, I worked on them for four days. And for some reason... Sunday night, we still in Sunday night at this point, when I dropped my head and I prayed, I said, God, I don't understand this lesson. But there's something I, I'm missing here. And I turned on Josh Turner's Christmas album. And somehow that ball joint just started falling down. It took two hours on one side, and three hours on the other. But then ball joints got out. I walked inside. I got a few hours of sleep. That truck got delivered. That alignment got done. I made it to Cleveland, Mississippi and back. Yeah, I had a little issue with the tires. I didn't have a blowout. I didn't have a... Deer run out in front of me. I didn't have a person pull up. It's probably one of the best drives I've had. I make it back home. There was a gift card in my wallet to buy my dinner. There was a freezer at Home Depot when I needed it. There was one freezer at Home Depot when I needed it. When Marina called her mom and dad, I'd already told her, I said, well, this is another deal. We're going to have to charge it to the shop. We don't have the money. I'm telling y'all a story here. I hope that's all right. I'd gone out to the truck, remember? Pull the truck around. I had no idea. I mean, I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm mad. Because men get this. When you can't buy that appliance that just went out, that's a gut shot. Little did I know that my in-laws couldn't, couldn't come up with something to buy us for Christmas. And they had settled they was going to give us some money. And that money bought that freezer. I owe the shop nothing for that freezer. I'm thankful to my in-laws. When I had food poisoning... Also, I had to miss the youth Christmas lights. I was upset because somebody had to do my job. That's, that's my job to take those youth to the Christmas lights. That's my job to do that, not somebody else's. It's what I'm paid for. My wife, Marina, Miss Naomi, and there's others. I don't know who all went. They stepped up and they took those 20 some odd kids to the Christmas lights while I sat at home and got the rest so that I could feel better to be here today. We made it just fine to family. And I watched screaming babies and 
and Nana's 80, 88 years old. Just beat colon cancer. How many weeks ago was that? Three weeks ago. My grandma went in, had some something removed, colon, I don't know, that stuff done. And she was walking around like everything's fine. Watched her great-grandkids open presents. And that's when it hit me. That's the sermon for today. The Christmas story all comes together. When your eyes are clear of the hustle and the bustle, and you see the true reason you got through this week. I didn't get through this week because AutoZone helped me with the ball joints. O'Reilly's helped me with the ball joints. The body shop helped me this. I didn't get through any of that because of them. I got it done and got through this week because my Lord and Savior was born in a manger and I get that opportunity. I didn't do it myself. There's a reason my in-laws couldn't come up with a Christmas present. That wasn't because they weren't looking. It's because God knew it wasn't ready to be purchased yet. This manger is the reason for this season. Those presents are great. That time with family is great. But if you lose sight of this, you've lost the joy of Christmas. You have lost your opportunity to see how good God is. Y'all take your Bibles now. Luke chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and the family line of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for the birth of their son. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him tightly in cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. That's your scripture for today. When Maureen and I got married... Uh, it was before we got married, and my first Christmas in the family, Brother Jimmy, before we, we opened presents, said, this is how we're going to start Christmas. I encourage you to do the same tomorrow. Bring everything back into the correct perspective. Because if you lose that perspective, it looks like life's real hard. The devil's working harder than he has to most other time of the year. Keaton, I think, had a bout of food poisoning. If you didn't get blessed by that song earlier, you need to get your ears checked. Okay? My whole week leading up to this, Keaton getting food poisoning. Sound goblins. Okay, I'm sure there's numerous other things that have happened to you this week. You know why? Because the focus is on God. And the devil is at hard at work to change that. He wants you to look at earth and life and the dark and not the birth of God's only son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're at a point 
in our sermon that we're going to look at the light that Jesus gives us. The light that gives us hope. The light that keeps us going day to day. When Brother Bob said something about the candlelight service, I said, yes, I want to do that. I have no idea how to do that. (laughs) Let me tell you, the candlelight service is probably one of the hardest things to kind of implement in this. And I was like, I don't really know how to do this. And I said, no, it is. Because that light that you're given shines bright. Everything else around you gets dim. When you've got Jesus as your light, as your Savior. My sister and mom are going to come back up and y'all go head that way. And they're going to sing a song and, and Britt, then y'all come back up and we're going to go ahead and light these candles here in just a minute. Right after this song, I need my, my helpers to kind of get to where we can start lighting it. When my sister quits singing, we're going to light this place up. But I want to, I want to read these few words of the song that my sister is fixing to sing. There is a candle in every soul, some brightly burning, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes his home. Carry your candle. Run to the darkness. Seek out the helpless, confused and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. When they were practicing last night, we were still kind of up in the air. We're going to do two songs, one song. And I said, look, the debate's over. We got to do both songs. This is going to be your time of invitation. Mainly because I don't want you to burn nobody. Okay? Britt, we can, we can open this up for invitation later too, but I'm just scared somebody's going to burn somebody. <laughs> That's a very scary part of a candlelight service. But I want you to take your heart and your mind, focus on that light in your hand. I want you to think about your life. Think about where you're at. Think about how hard life may be, but what that light represents and what you're going to do with it. There is a candle in every soul dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes his home. Carry your
in a manger, no crib for his bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the Yeah.